Hi, welcome to the next training session of SAP FICU module. Today we'll be doing settlement of internal orders, which is a part of SAP controlling module. Settlement in internal order is the process of moving cost incurred on a sender object to one or more receiving objects. In case of internal order, costs are incurred on the other through goods issued or receipts, journal entries, internal activity, allocations, other settlements and settled to a cost center, internal order or fixed cost or an account which refers to a ledger account just to name a few. So once the costs are booked into an internal order, after the completion of the project or the job or activity, the cost has to be settled to any of the cost object or a fixed asset or like something like such. The settlement of an internal order can be to a true account or object and have a true impact on FI module. Settlement is the process of moving the cost incurred on a sender object to one or more of the receiving objects as said. That means if the cost has been received have been taken up on the internal order, it has to be settled with some of the other objects in the SAP controlling part. Now moving on, in this particular part, there are three configuration steps that we have to do. They are, so in settlement, as you can see on the screen, we are on the last part of the internal order. In settlement, we will be doing maintain allocation structures maintain settlement profiles and maintain number ranges for settlement documents and after completion of these of the configuration steps we will be moving up to the end user testing part where we will be posting the transactions and will settle those transactions of internal order with any of the other cost objects or maybe a ledger account or fixed asset and we'll see how those settlements are done in the SAP system. So moving on to the first configuration step that is to maintain allocation structures. Allocation is the main component of settlement profile. The settlement structure defines the what and how of the settlement process. Allocation structure purpose is twofold. One is to define which cost elements on the order can be settled. This group of cost element is called the origin. And the second to determine which cost element called the settlement cost element will be used to debit and credit the sending order and receiving order. There are basically two types of allocations. One is distribution and the second is assessment. So an allocation structure comprises one or several settlement assignments. An assignment shows which cost, that is origin cost element group from the debit cost elements are to be settled to which receiver type for example, cost center, order, or it may be activity type, any of them, it can be settled with. Now, as talked about, there are two kinds of allocation. One is distribution, another is assessment. In distribution, the following information is passed on to the receiver. One is the original primary cost element is retained sender and receiver information is documented with line items in the CO document through distribution. Whereas moving on to the assessment, the following information is passed on to the receiver. One is original cost elements are grouped together into assessment cost element, that is the secondary cost element. 
the original cost element are not displayed on the receiver and the sender and the receiver information is displayed in the CO document only. In fact, each allocation structure must fulfill few criteria. One is completeness. An allocation structure is assigned to each object to be settled. All cost elements in which costs are incurred must be represented in the appropriate allocation structure. And the second criteria is uniqueness. Each cost element in which costs are incurred may only appear once in an allocation structure. Only one settlement cost element may be assigned to a source within a particular allocation structure. Note, when you settle to materials, you do not need to create settlement cost element. Settlement cost element over here refers to the secondary cost element. Now let's see how we can configure or we can maintain an allocation structure in the SAP system. So the configuration path is on your screen along with the transaction code. You can use any of them so as to maintain the allocation structure in the SAP system. Now moving on to the configuration steps with regard to maintain allocation structure, let's move on to the SAP system. So moving on to the SAP screen. So now moving to the SAP path, we first need to go to the SPRO. Enter. Then SAP reference IMG. In that we need to go to controlling. And in controlling we need to go to internal orders. Now within internal orders we need to go to actual postings and in actual postings now we need to go to settlement and then maintain allocation structures. So there is settlement and in settlement you can see over here maintain allocation structure. So the path is simple we first need to go to the internal orders then to actual postings then settlement and then maintain allocation structures. Now we can execute this maintain allocation structure over here and as we have executed now the system will take you to the next screen as you can see on your screen it says change view allocation structures overview. Now in this particular part we need to create our own allocation structure so to create our own allocation structure now we will be creating a new entries on the screen. So we can go to new entries over here and we can create a new entry for our own company and the new entry can be of two digits. So let's I take it as ZA and we can name it as 1200 that is the company code settlement structure. Once we have done this now what we need to do is we need to save this screen so that the structure can be created. Now once we have saved this structure you can see that data is saved. Now we need to select the allocation structure over here and we need to go to the assignment and double click on to the assignment part. So as you double click on the assignment it will take you to the next screen as you can see the screen is blank. So the settlement assessment, uh, assignment part is uniquely defines the combination of origin and settlement cost element. It is important at this juncture to have your settlement strategy defined for the order type that will be used or that will be using the settlement structure. Your strategy will have a direct impact on the depth of the assignment development. You can implement a simple strategy resulting in all order cost being grouped under one origin and settled to one account. Or you may choose a complex strategy which 
with each unique cost types like uh, labor or material and consulting for example being settled to a separate settlement account so it is up to you how you want to move up over here from here onwards what is your strategy for the settlement so in this particular part we need to assign the assignment so for assigning the assignment we first need to go to the new entries so now we'll be moving to the new entry over here so now moving on to the new entries we can see that the assignment and the text fields are blank so we need to fill in the following fields one is the assignment which is known as the settlement assignment this field is used by SAP to define the settlement activity in this you have to enter the ID which can be up to three character long for the allocation assignment so suppose I take the three character as 010 and now we need to move to the text part here we need to enter the allocation assignment description so let's take the description as settlement settlement of cost element and now once I have defined the assignment and the description we can move on and we can save this screen so now the assignment has been done now within this assignment we need to select the assignment over here and now after selecting we need to move on to the next that is the source so after assignment the source has to be assigned in this screen now so we can double click on to the source so once I double click on to the source now it asks you the controlling area so the controlling area will be taken as Z100 respectively you can have your own controlling area which you have created enter now once entered you can see the next screen comes to you as is for the source and in the source you have to assign that what are the different cost element which will be taken in this so within the source you have to define the cost element group or individual cost elements range which cost can be settled by the settlement assignment both primary and secondary cost element can be contained within the group to establish the origin place your cursor on the settlement assignment and once you have selected your assignment we have double click onto the source so as to reach over here so now over here we need we have got two options one is to define the range of cost element from and to or else we can assign the cost element group as well so both the options are there whichever you want to take as of now so suppose we take the cost element from and to range so let's select the cost element the chart of account that is 1000 enter so now there are different cost elements as you can see on your screen so suppose I take the cost element from 400000 till 9 so double click on to this and now I take it from this to 9 so I have taken all the, the cost elements which are there for all the expenses as of now in the system so as to be settled with this particular assignment so once this cost element has been assigned now we can move on and we can save the screen so saved so now that data is saved over here on the screen as you can see now we can go back so one step you have to go back and as you move back you can see in the above screen that now the overlapping checkbox over here now has become green in color if you put your cursor on this particular option you will find that it shows you ok so this is how your overlapping part has been done overlapping check 
and the overlapping checks would become green if it has been green that means your configuration is successful now once this has been done we need to move on to the last option over here settlement cost elements so the settlement cost elements we can double click on to that okay we need to select this assignment and then we have to click on to the settlement cost element so you mind it you need to select this assignment over here then only we can click on to the settlement cost elements so double click on to the settlement cost elements and now it take you to the next part that is change view settlement cost elements overview now the settlement cost element is the section of settlement assignment that determines the cost elements posted to both sender and receiver during the settlement there are two types of settlement one is internal settlement and another is external settlement internal settlement refers to the type of settlement in which postings are internal to the controlling module an example is any order settlement in which the receiver is another co object like cost center or cost object or uh, maybe a, uh, a copa segment or maybe an activity type because the postings never cross into the fi module or any other module this is within the controlling module itself so for this particular part for the internal settlement you must use a secondary cost element to facilitate the postings within the co module the original account assignment on the order such as a goods receipt posting is maintained and forms the bridge between the co and the fi module whereas in the external settlement this refers to the type of settlement in which postings are external to co module an example of an external settlement is one in which the receiver is a gl account instead of any of the cost object or maybe there could be a fixed asset because the settlement results in a cross into fi you must have to use a real or a primary cost element in this case the original cost the original account posting is also maintained in the example but a second posting would be added so you have to take care that in the internal a secondary cost element is been taken because it is internal within the co module where an internal controlling document is generated but whereas in the external settlement it is outside the internal part that means it involves a primary cost element because the settlement is done with a ledger account or a fixed asset so over there a financial fi document is generated and with respect to that a co document is also generated in the controlling part so now moving on to this particular settlement cost elements we need to go for a new entry in this case also so we need to go to click on to the new entries so once you have selected the new entries now we need to go to the receiver category if you remember we have we need to select the receiver category over here for the settlement so the receiver category over here will be ctr for cost center settlement we can double click on that and you need to select this by cost element that means whenever a settlement will take place it will take place with respect to the cost element there has to be a cost element whether it is a primary or a secondary doesn't matter so you have to check box this mark this uh, cost element part over here so receiver category basically defines which object is a valid receiver for the settlement assignment once you have selected the receiver category and you have check box marked the check box or by cost element now we can save the screen and the settlement of cost element is also been done so data was saved 
So this is what you need to do and moving on to the one left that is assessment cost element. If you double click on to the assessment cost element. Now it takes you to the next screen over here in the assessment cost element part. The assessment cost element is the final section of settlement assignment. It determines the cost elements posted to both the sender and the receiver during the settlement. However, we don't need to do anything in this particular part. Even if you want, there is no need of that to be done anything in it. Because it has not been used as of uh, uh, as a part of the settlement. So this is what you need to do. We have created an allocation structure, then we define the assignment then selecting the assignment and defining the source and the settlement cost elements and once these all have been done now we can we can go back and once you go back again you can see over here that this green overlap is there that is what has to be there and now the configuration is over for the maintain allocation so we have completed the maintain allocation structure for the settlement now Moving on to the next configuration step that is maintain settlement profile. In the settlement profile, you define a range of control parameters for settlement. You must define the settlement profile before you can enter a settlement rule for a sender. The settlement profile includes among other things the retention period for the settlement documents. So the settlement profile is the component of order configuration that provides the order type with, with the details of how it can settle its cost. It complies this by controlling how a settlement rule can be defined for a given order. The settlement profile is an accumulation of all the other, other areas of settlement as well as the addition of new pieces of customization not yet seen. Each order type can have a different settlement profiles but each must have one assigned. So how we can maintain the settlement we have to look for that. So if you want to settle the cost each time to just one cost center or just one GL account, you need a settlement profile. As you cannot maintain the settlement parameter during the settlement to a receiver, you must save a settlement profile either in the order type or in the model order or a, res a reference order. So you must bear in mind that these things has to be maintained. The settlement document take up the additional storage capacity when a posting period is finally logged against further postings in the financial accounting. So let's see how we can create, how we can maintain a settlement profile in the SAP system. So the path is again there and the transaction code is also there. So let's move on to the SAP screen and on the very next to the maintain allocation structure you can find the maintain settlement profiles just uh, after a couple of steps down you can see that maintain settlement profile is there the path is again same within the settlement we need to go to maintain settlement profiles so once you find this we need to move and execute this particular step so executing it So once executed you will find a pop-up screen which shows you two options. One is to enter the settlement profile in order type and the second is to maintain the settlement profile. So in this we need to go and double click on the maintain settlement profiles. So once I double click onto it, it take me to the next screen, change view settlement profile overview and you can see there are a number of different settlement profiles already defined. What we need to do is we need to create our own settlement profile. So we'll be going to the new entries. So click on to the new entries. So once I have selected on to the new entries, now 
we can we need to define a so we need to take a settlement profile id which can be of six characters or uh, it could be alphanumeric so suppose i take it as z one one zero sorry suppose i take it as z zero one two zero zero followed by the company code and i can put the description to it and that could be internal order settlement profile so this is what i have put the description now moving to the next section that is actual cost oblique cost of sales now this relates to the overall control of the order in relation to when it may be closed or archived so the first is to be settled in full now to be settled in full setting forces the value of the order to be of zero dollars before it can be closed SCP will return a hard error if a user tries to close the order with a balance in it so the order has to be zero because most companies prefer to see this operating expenses in in the in the cost center accounting the majority of internal orders falls into this category also when integrating with investment management it is important to choose this option so that the balance sheet calculations are accurate so in this particular part we need to select the to be settled in full option on the screen can be settled is a second part but it is not mandatory and even it should not be preferred not for settlement is again is another part which is not preferred now moving to the next section is default values so within the default values it relates to how the order will determine what cost elements are valid for settlement and how postings will occur so in this you need to select the allocation structure first so the allocation structure is the same which we have just created a while back in the last configuration step and the allocation structure we defined was z a if you remember followed by the company code so this is the za is the allocation structure which we have created in the last step even we have created the source structure so we can even select the source structure over here as well so if you move on to select the source structure the source structure is not there as of now so as of this is not required because from the allocation structure only everything will be picked the source and the settlement profile and everything the next part is pa transfer structure now invent this is not mandatory moving to the next is default and not required even default object type this field provides the order with a defaulting receiver object type during the settlement rule creation so whether you want to settle it on the receiver side with the cost center or with the internal order or with a profitability segment that has to be defined over here so we need to select with what will be the receiver order in this part receiver type so we can select from the list of different objects type in this so the one which we will be receiving is cost center however there could be different receiver there could be different receiver objects in this as you can see on the screen they can be a cost object cost center assets gl account material network order order item even profitability segments so the one which we will be taking as of now is the cost center and that has been selected over here moving to the next now is the indicators now in the indicator part 
there are number of different options as you can see on the screen because it relates to how you define the dollar values to be settled so if you want 100% validation you need to select to that so 100% validation means that SAP will check to make sure that all the cost will be settled by the rules the user have established on the order if less than or greater than 100% of the cost are not covered by the rules SAP will return a warning when the order is saved so we'll be selecting this overall settlements would be equal to 100% the next is percentage settlement now again this field if we make this field active the user can maintain the settlement rules on the order that determines the order value by percentage as well so we'll be selecting this and you can decide the settlement as per the percentages as well if this particular percentage settlement is active the next is equivalence numbers now in this part the user can use equivalence numbers as an alternative to the percentage if it is easier for the user to set up a proportionate as opposed to the calculating percentage that can be done so you can decide even the proportionate settlement so that again can be taken up over here as a part of it so these are the different options which you can take and the another option now is the amount settlement in the amount settlement the user can establish the settlement rules with the dollar value amount and the next last one is the variances to the costing based PA that is profitability index so that we will not be taking up because as of now the profitability analysis has not been implemented so we need to select the first three options over here in the indicator part now moving to the valid receivers now in the valid receiver part you need to decide that which of these different receivers you want to activate as an optional part so normally in any practical scenario normally the settlement is done with the GL so that can be taken up as a optional cost center is taken as a settlement part then the order is taken as a settlement part and even a fixed asset can be taken as a settlement part so these are the four options which is normally been taken the for the internal order settlement to be done with now moving up to the other parameters now is the document type so whenever an external settlement take place an accounting document is generated so you need to decide whether that particular accounting document which will be generated will be with what document type you can even create a Z document type for the same or in normal cases we use SA as a document type in such scenario the next is the maximum number so again in the maximum number of settlement rules has to be put up over here so the maximum number you can put is 999 that's the maximum you can create as a max as a as a rule in the SAP system so this provides the order with the maximum number of settlement rules the user can maintain the maximum number is 999 although 999 may not always be practical you can do harm to your productivity if you do not maintain a high enough number so better is to maintain a high number over here so that you can maintain any number of rules in the SAP system as required now the, the last part comes up is the residence time this field determines how long in months the settlement document must be retained in the SAP system before it can be archived consulting the consult the company policy for the proper settings as per the client or as per the company what they want whether they want to archive it within within six months or a year or a two year or how much time they want it to be once suppose I take it as to be now as 24 months as an archive time so once this has been done you can save the screen and your your settlement profile will be defined so you can save this and you can see the data was saved that means the profile has been completed so once the the settlement profile has been created now we have completed with the maintain settlement profile and we can move on to the next configuration step
that is maintain number ranges for settlement documents now in this case the settlement documents the number range assignment is done at the controlling area level so you need to maintain the number because whenever the settlement is done the document numbers are generated internally and for them the number range has to be assigned so for defining the or maintaining the number range for the settlement documents we now move to the next step and that is maintaining the number range in the path we can close this pop up screen now and now in this particular part to create the number range you can see the maintain number range for settlement document very ne very next to the maintain settlement profile one after that maintain number ranges for settlement documents now we can execute this option over here and once executed you can see the screen now in this again we have to create the number range in the same manner as we have uh, been creating for the different number ranges for the co objects so the first step would be to create a group number range to which your controlling area can be assigned so for creating a group number range we need to move up to the group maintain you need to click on to this once you have clicked on to this now we need to go to group insert so once i click on to the insert now i need to maintain the text and the number range so suppose i maintain the text over here as settlement documents for ibm llb or llc now you can define the number range over here whichever you want to maintain with and the number range we can maintain over here can you start with 4 so let's take up with 24009 so this is what we have assigned the number range over here and now we can insert it so once inserting now you can see the number range has been inserted so once the number range has been inserted now So now we can move on to this not assigned part and we can select this 2600 double click on it and it will be selected so now and now i want to assign this particular number range to the settlement so we need to select the settlement document for ibm llc now once we have selected this now we can move to click on to this element group so once we click on to this element group the not assigned number range not assigned part will get assigned to the settlement document for ibm now we can move on and we can select on to the assign element group so once click on to it you can see now that the number range has moved from over here to over here and has been assigned and now we can save the screen and once we have clicked on to the save you can see the number range have been saved So this is how you would be creating your settlement part and the configuration has been done now now we'll be moving to the unit testing part where we'll be looking forward that how a settlement can be done from an internal order to the another cost object or a gl account or an fixed asset as well So now moving on to the unit testing part let's first create an internal order with the transaction code ko01 and once we create a, an internal order then we need to release the internal order as well if we don't release the internal order you will not be able to use it for any of the transactions so moving on to ko01 first slash n 
KO01 enter now in this we can create an internal order so for creating an internal order first of all we have to put the order type under which we want to create the internal order so the internal order type over here is 1100 now we can enter on the screen and it take us to the next screen now so we can define the next part over here like uh, the internal order number can be assigned uh, we can take it as like admin transport or in fact we can take an internal order as like uh, trade fair 1100 as a code as a description part of it and then we can select the company code then we need to select the object class and we can select the profit center if you know with which particular profit center this particular internal order is related to so if you remember if you know the exit profit center you can assign the profit center and if you don't know you can leave the profit center as blank so suppose i am taking the profit center as 21000 enter and you can take the other other respective fields all are optional depending upon your requirement if you know that whether this particular internal order is related to a particular plant or a business area you can decide that as well else you can leave it blank and you can save it now nothing else has to be filled on any of the other tabs so we'll be saving it and the internal order will be created so you can see the order was created with the number 1004 now we have created the internal order 1004 but we need to release this internal order so for releasing the internal order the next transaction is KO02 so moving to the next transaction slash N KO02 but you must remember that the order to be released is 1004 enter so you can see the number has automatically been generated if in case it is not been generated you need to fill it over here as 1004 then enter this is for change internal order and in this now to release the internal order we need to go to control data and in control data we need to click onto this release order option so once we click onto this release order option it will be released so you can see the order has been released now so once released we can save this trans the internal order and the internal order has been changed so this is how you have completed the first two transactions now we will be posting certain transaction with respect to the internal order so that certain values can be accumulated into the internal order and then we will be going for the settlement of that so moving to the transaction now we can execute the transaction with any of the other any of the transactions like fb50 you can even take with fb60 also so moving to the transaction FB60 enter we can select the vendor then the invoice date suppose I take the invoice date as of 112 2014 and then we can take the amount suppose the amount is $20,000 and then you need to select the ledger accounts so the ledger account has been selected over here suppose it's 40002 or even you can go for the the search option with the f4 key so that you can have a list of all the gl accounts and even you can decide from there as well so this is your whole different list of gl account and even from that we can search suppose i take it to the rent account and the rent GL has been selected now we can define the amount that is twenty thousand dollars and moving further now is we need to take the business area so the business area has been taken now we need to move on to the cost center 
and we have taken the cost center over here as well and now the internal order this order refers to the internal order so here we need to select the internal order we can click on to the F4 option or we can go to this list of orders enter so you can see the last option 1004 we will be selecting that as an internal order over here and even if you want you can put the narration over here rent for trade fair 1100 and now we can simulate this transaction enter okay enter okay it says a different profit center we have not assigned any profit center to it as of now So as the document has been simulated, now we can post this document. So we can click on the post and we can see the document number will be generated and the document will be posted. So you can see the document number 1000061 was posted in the company code 1200. Even if you want to display this document. We can go to the display over here and we can display this document on the screen. So you can see on this particular document that the cost center is this and the cost center order internal order number is 1004 which we just have created a while back and the profit center is there 11000. So now moving to the next even if you want you can check the profit center uh, internal order reports also for the internal order balances so this is how you have created the post expenses or you can post different expenses or GL postings and vendor postings over here and now once an inventory has been posted with certain amount of values even you can post number of different transactions in the same internal order like I have taken one of twenty thousand dollars similarly you can take another of ten thousand dollars forty thousand dollars and when couple of more transactions are posted and at the end the total amount can be settled to one particular cost center or cost object or to a GL or an asset depending upon the kind of settlement has to be done so moving to the settlement of internal order the next transaction before that we need to maintain the settlement rule so to maintain settlement rule we again have to go to the transaction K02 so moving to the transaction K02 enter we need to select the internal order for which we want to do the settlement so that will be taken over here that is 1004 enter and now in the screen you can find on the top part that there is an option of settlement rule so we need to click on to the settlement rule over here and once clicked you can see that the next screen is to maintain the settlement rule overview so here we need to maintain the settlement rule with which we want to settle with so now moving up to the first part that is the category we need to move on to the category over here first and in the category we need to select the cost center moving to the next is the settlement receiver so who will be the receiver in this case has to be selected as we have taken the CTR that is the cost center so we need to take a cost center as a receiver in the settlement receiver part so let's select a cost center from the list of cost centers so the cost center I would be taking is the admin transport that is 110010 
over here and now I want to transfer the whole 100% to this particular cost center as a settlement so that is what has to be taken up over here enter so these are the parameter which need to be filled for the settlement rule so you need to define the settlement rule that the category that with which you want to make the settlement whether it is a cost center or a GL account or an order or an asset whatever it is and if, respectively you need to assign the receiver in that case if it is a cost center a cost center has to be assigned as a receiver if it is a GL then a GL has to be assigned as a settlement receiver accordingly and then you define the percentage of settlement whether you want to make a hundred percent settlement of this internal order or you want a parcel settlement option so once you have defined these parameters we can save this screen so once saved you can see the message order has been changed that means the internal order has been maintained now moving to the next transaction is to IO settlement that is internal order settlement transaction is KO88 so we can move to the transaction now KO88 enter so in this screen now you need to select the order number the order which you want to go for the settlement and then the settlement period the fiscal year and the automatic or the way you want to process the type it should be automatic and now we'll be executing this part in the test run mode first and then we'll be moving after test run as a actual run in the system so executing now the actual settlement so once we execute the actual settlement in test run mode you can see now a new screen has been generated which shows you the settlement details the order period fiscal year processing type and then it shows you the parameter over here in test run part and the settlement executed so you can go down below even you can see over here settlement executed is one and no change no error there is no error as of an, as in this particular settlement as on the screen and even you can go to this option over here in the detail list part which will give you the further detail of the settlement so click on to this and you can see the settlement detail has been reflected to you that the sender is the internal order 1004 and the receiver is 110010 with the amount of $20,000 the settlement has been done but this is in the test mode now we can go back and we can we can remove the text test mode or the test run part this test run and now we can execute the transaction again so now we can move on to execute so now we can execute the test uh, the settlement without test run and we have taken off the test run from over here and now we can move on to execute the settlement execute option now and you can see now the settlement is already settled or there is nothing to settle as it has already been settled with the execution part so this is how you need to do your settlement for internal order part and once the internal order settlement has been done so we are done with the unit testing part we have executed the transactions and even we have maintained the settlement rule and the internal order settlement has been done now we can move on to the some of the reports of internal order just as mentioned internal order by cost elements the transaction the report for this is s underscore alr underscore 870129296 let's execute the same report in the SAP system enter so we can execute this report this report gives you the detail of the internal order as per the cost elements so we can execute the report now
So this report is basically the similar one which we have have seen in the internal order planning part. It shows you the actual and the plan values of the internal order. The internal order number is there and the cost element numbers are there on the screen to you. We can even collapse these different reports and if you want you can expand those reports for details and you can even have a look of them. So this is one of the report of internal order. We can exit this report and now we can move on to the next report that is internal order yearly comparisons. So we can take the second report that is S underscore ALR underscore 870130001. Now let's execute this report which gives you the internal order values from one fiscal year to the another fiscal year and you can have a comparison of that. So executing this report the same parameter has to be filled that is the controlling area fiscal year period from and to and now we can execute the report over here. So once the report has been executed let's see the output. So the output is there on the screen to you Sorry, this is, the, this is the report parameter which we have executed and we need to fill the parameter over here as controlling area, fiscal year 1 and fiscal year 2 for comparison purpose and we can execute this report now which will give you the, the information or the data related to the internal order for the current fiscal year and for the last fiscal year for comparing the results. So you can see the report over here on the screen. It shows you the actual 2013 and actual 2014 values. In 2013 there was no transaction. In 2014 the actual transactions for the cost centers has cost element has been reflected as a group value. If you want to this is the group as you can see over here. If you want to see the values as per the internal order, respective internal order, then in that case you need to select the internal order respectively from over here on the left hand side. So we can select the internal order 1002. Now if you select the internal order 1002, you can see the changes on the screen on the report. Now over here the, the internal order has been updated because now it is for a single internal order and the values is even been reflecting the cost element 400001 with the actual value in the in the fiscal year 2014 has been over here on the screen similarly we can look for the values actual yearly values and comparison for the other internal order as well that is 1004 and if we do for that you can see the values been updated over here and the internal number has also been updated over here. So this is the report for the internal order for year to year comparisons. So these are the same reports which we have discussed in the internal order planning part and similarly there is an actual line item report that is KOB1 which gives you the internal order line item details with their transactions. So if we execute this, we run this particular report KOBN B1 enter. Now we can move on to the next screen. We can select the internal order if you want to have the internal order line items. If you want the line items of the order group, you can take the group or even the element or element group can be taken. Now this report can be executed for the posting date on the basis of the posting date. So you can select the posting date in this as you want to have a look of the transactions or the line items. So suppose I am executing this for the internal order 1001 to 1004 for the posting period 112 to 31 2014. Now executing the report so there is no value as of now because probably we have executed it for the 2015. Let's change the date and execute again. So executing the report again for the month of December 2014. 
and now you can see that there are two transactions in the month of December with respect to the internal order which is reflecting on the screen even the accounting document number are there and the cost element is there and the offsetting account has also been reflected and the internal order is 1004 so this is how you can execute the report for line items for internal order you can exit the report yes similarly you can execute the last one that is the list of internal order this is basically gives you the information related to the master data that is internal order master data it gives you all the basic informations the name when it was been created what which user id it been used what are the other parameters which has been filled in the master data of internal order those things can be looked with this list of internal order that is kok5 so let's execute this kok5 enter and now you need to select the variant over here so the variant has to be standard SAP variant that is SAP and 01 double click on it the variant has been selected then execute it enter so once we executed and entered you will find a list of all the various internal order created for the controlling area Z100 you can see the internal order the internal order type has been mentioned the reference number is there and the user ID date then user user ID was changed by and the date change description of internal order company code controlling area and further all detail related to the master data even you will find the release date when the internal order was been released for the transaction posting and even you can see the settlement settlement has also been reflected to you on the screen to you settlement and the cost center has been mentioned to you so these are the different master data details which can be uh, can be extracted with the report that is KOK5 so the, this is all about the internal order settlement now we have completed the internal order accounting part in the controlling module where we have covered all the basic settings then the internal order planning and now the internal order settlement as well and we'll see you in the with a new topic in the new and the next training session thank you